always proportions can be better. I think the head size is kind of inconsistent. I think you're tending to go on the small side though, which is, I feel like that's actually a better problem to have than making them too large. If you're going to be off, it's a little bit better, but sometimes like it gets too noticeable here. There's, like this looks like a little pin head on top of a big body. So you gotta watch out for that. You wanna make your head size somewhere between one seventh and one eighth the whole, the whole length of the body. Or if you want it to be realistic, you would go bigger than one seventh if you wanna make it realistic. Because in actual humans, normal humans on average are a little bit bigger than seven heads. So this looks more like nine heads. That's a, that's just, you never wanna go that small probably. I think that they're moving, which is really nice. Like this one definitely has like a movement to it. This is Angelique, right? This has a movement to it, which is really nice. But one thing you could think more about, I like, like what I'm saying is I like that. I like that it's got a curvature. And this line shows me that you're thinking that it's moving into the pitcher plane, right? It's going away from us. This line, is that what you were trying to show with that? Okay, so also show that with this more. Because this is gonna have a real change of value that we can see. Whereas this is like a construction line that you can't leave on there. You don't wanna do that, but then not nail that. You can imagine exactly how does it fit into this other piece here and try to get that right. That'll help. And then here, you gotta be careful of just doing swoops that violate the anatomy. So in this case, the tibia is here and it's here. You have to anchor both sides. So I want you to, when you get the knee, before you draw the leg, I want you to get the ankle figured out exactly where that is and then do the lines between them. You're doing this kind of a thing and then you're putting a foot on it. You're not anchoring it. So you have to jump to where, you have to jump to where you're going. I don't know if you remember, we talked about it last time here. So take your palm and put it on your shoulder and look at your elbow. Okay, is it right in the middle of the end of the arm? It's medial, it's medial. So this is, this is medial, right? That kind of thinking is, is, gonna, is going to help. You're getting it to start to flow. Um, look, I don't know if, I don't remember if Mike does it this way, but Steve will often do this kind of a thing, right? Which is very old and very traditional. But here's the thing I need to remind you though, is that the actual rib cage, so let's say the spine's doing this. The rib cage is smaller than that. So this rib cage is too big. I think what's happening is you're sort of averaging, averaging the difference between your perception of how wide the shoulders as the arms are extending out with the actual structure underneath. Don't confuse those two, keep those separate in your mind. So in other words, the rib cage got too big because you were sort of adding all of the mass of the shoulders and the arms to your simple conception of the rib cage. This is better. This is better because here, um, you might even get a little bit of the rib cage down there. It just depends. You see what I mean? This is better. And then you added the stuff on top of it, right? So it's totally okay to do that. That's fine. But you have to know this is not the rib cage. So I can't go, all right. <laughs> do you see what I mean? Do you see how huge that would be? So always keep in mind that these are separate. This is too much. Uh, this one's too much, especially. So that's exactly the right idea, but your vanishing points are too close to your center of vision. That's gonna give a very distorted looking figure. And so in this kind of case here, look at the upper contour and try to get a sense of the flow. Imagine it's like a mountain range. That's what I do in a reclining pose. So if you were doing like hills or mountains, carefully, right? If you were doing hills or mountains, you'd be, you'd be kind of moving like this and you'd be really looking to, oh, where does this come down? And then, oh, there's another piece here. And oh, that's weird. There's like a lift here, right? You'd be doing this kind of thinking. Do you see what I'm doing? Check that gesture when you're doing a reclining figure like this, because we're not very sensitive to this distance here. And we tend to just do whatever in here because we used to think of the figure upright. And then on the ground, you have to think about compression. You can't just do that. You need to be like, okay, is there a pillow here? All right, well, draw it. Is there a pillow here? Maybe there's a pillow sticking out here and, and going up. And maybe there's something blocking her, obscuring her, obscuring her. If it's a reclining pose, you really gotta get involved with the ground, whatever she's lying on. I, I like these, the simple, you know, Vilpuian bean of the gesture. I like that a lot. Your rib cages are doing this. So your rib cage, so this is your pelvic area here. Can you see what I'm drawing? Your rib cages are tending to get away from you. You see that? 
That's what's happening. The rib cage comes lower than we think because we often can't see the bottom of the rib cage because it's buried underneath the abdominal muscles, transverse abdominis and external oblique. So that's not right, is what I'm saying compared to this. It really is going to come lower and you probably have extended this distance too high. So watch out for that. And then if it's a reclining pose, that's an extreme angle here. So make sure you got that right. Make sure that you're not making it more vertical. I, I like how you're thinking here about the overlaps, but uh, the problem with this overlap is that you gotta be careful because the, the, the actual gluteus maximus is going to, part of it is coming here as well. And so it's actually gonna cross over here. So just be careful when you get into that particular overlap, really look at what you're seeing and, and see if you can get, see what I mean? Watch out for that. It's turning into a Looney Tune. Nice work though. Keep going, keep trying to get more structural with it. Keep trying to balance your proportions and just be more and more thoughtful as you continue to, as you continue to work. Nice work.